What's up students, it's PGT Sensei, we're back again in class. Today I'm going to teach you what you need to do in order to get your tubs to start producing pins and mushrooms. After I spawn my grain and substrate into my 12 quart tubs, I shut the lid on them and I leave them alone for about 10 to 15 days on average. Notice about 5 to 7 days in that my slim starts to cover the surface. I let it go for about another week to let the mycelium network strengthen and consolidate before I move on to the next step. So the next step is I'm going to introduce fruiting conditions to my tub. Fruiting conditions just means you're increasing the fresh air exchange rate while also maintaining high humidity. This is where misting and kind of flipping the lid thing comes into play. Uh, some people like to start fruiting conditions right after spawning, which I think is fine as well. I just choose not to do this. I keep the lid shut because I find it helps keep the humidity in there much longer. Now I open up my lid and I check my surface conditions. If yours is anything like mine's, you might notice little white lint looking balls on the surface. This is primordius. This is a good sign. This means that uh, your tub's getting ready to pin. Now, one of the key points for fruiting is you want to keep temperatures ideally between 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 28 degrees Celsius. The lower your room temperatures are, the slower things will progress. In my experience, I can still grow them around 65 degrees. However, things move a lot quicker when you're in the ideal range around 75 degrees. So if you have primordias, how do you get pins to happen? Uh, pins form when there's a perfect microclimate condition of moisture evaporating. And this is where I use the flarosol mister here to create that condition. So I will mist the tub gently to try and create lots of little water bead droplets on the surface. And when these water bead droplets start to slowly evaporate, this is going to help induce spinning. Now some people ask about light. Uh, light, I don't find it very key to pinning. Uh, it's not required to grow, but it helps. Uh, light primary function is to kind of give direction for the fruits to grow towards. Kind of like a plant leaning towards the sunny side of the hill. I just use ambient light from my room and from a window. It's plenty enough for growing. A grow light is completely optional. Another thing about the mist thing, you can use a normal mister bottle as well. I just wouldn't spray it directly on there. You want to point the mister bottle upwards and spray up and kind of let the mist gently fall onto the surface. You want like a fine mist onto your surface. And uh, you want to make sure that the water droplets stay resting on the surface. Another way you can check for this is if you take a tub and you shine a flashlight onto it, you can see the little micro beads reflect the light and it's a lot easier to see. So once you see a bunch of those beads on the surface, you're pretty much uh, set on the surface conditions. Now after I finish with this, I'm going to flip the lid on my tub and I'm going to rest it on top with a small gap open. Now this small gap is going to allow passive fresh air exchange to happen and this is generally all you need to provide them. I don't really fan them at this point, I just keep an eye out on the tubs. If I notice things start to get dry, I will mist to keep the humidity up. How often you need to mist will kind of depend on your ambient room humidity. If you live in a drier climate and notice your tub walls don't have condensation on them anymore, that's an indication that it's time to mist the tubs in order to keep the humidity up. If you're growing in the summer or something and it's very humid out, you probably don't need to mist at all. If things are too wet in your tub, however, and you notice water start to pull up in there, you want to wake up that excess water with a clean paper towel. Water pulling on the surface is not ideal and it's going to cause issues if left unattended. After you notice primordias, about 5 to 10 days afterwards, the pins are going to start to form. You want to avoid misting the pins directly if you can. A little mist on them won't hurt, but if the caps are too wet, it could lead to some bacterial growth on them. So I, I just avoid misting them directly. So what I do instead is I'll mist the walls of the tub and I'll mist the ceiling of the tub to have condensation on there. And this is going to help keep humidity up in, in there. Once your pins start to get a little bit bigger, uh, this is where I will go ahead and switch over to a dub tub. I'm basically putting another tub flipped over on top of it. Now what this is going to do is it will provide room for your fruits to grow upwards to. Uh, the tub is also clear, so this allows light to come in from directly above them. It allows them to kind of grow straight up. If you keep the opaque lid on top, what's going to happen is they're going to try to grow towards the side walls where light can get in from. So just a little tip if you want to have your fruits growing straight up. And I'll miss the top tub here just to kind of help keep up the humidity in here and I rest it on top. Now key thing here is with the tub resting on top there's going to be a little gap here. This gap here is enough to provide fresh air exchange for them. Now when the pins start to get mature, 
This is when they kind of ramp up their CO2 production. And if left unattended to, most of the time they grow just fine. Uh, however, you, know, you might notice they might have some fuzziness around the feet of the stem. A little fuzziness is normal, not to worry. The only time you need to worry is that fuzziness kind of travels like way up the stem, or like halfway or more. That, that means you're not getting enough fresh air exchange and that they're suffocating. Now, to fix this, uh, you can adjust the gap for passive fresh air exchange, increase that gap. Uh, or what you can do is kind of open them up and just kind of fan the tub out uh, for 10 seconds. This is going to burp out the excess CO2 that's sitting in there and then you put it back into fruiting conditions. If you just fan too often, things can dry out. So misting is very important to keep humidity up in there. Now it's gonna take some experimenting to be able to dial in the perfect conditions for them. A lot of this is dependent on your ambient room conditions like temperature, humidity, and the rate of airflow in the room. So just play around to, to adjust the fit accordingly to what your room conditions are like. I hope this gives you a good understanding of what conditions you need to keep your mushrooms happy and healthy. If you find my content useful, please leave a like on the video and share it with anyone you think it might help. It really helps this channel out. I want to send a big thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon affiliate links or make purchases from my merch store or support me directly on Patreon. I do have exclusive content on Patreon that's not available on YouTube. And if you're interested in learning more about mycology, I urge you to come join the Discord community. All links will be listed in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you guys in the next class. Peace out.